Hi, welcome to another session of Paraguide video tutorial. As a part of our Microsoft Dynamics CRM video training series, today we will cover one of the major aspects of MS CRM development. Today we will explore about plugins. Let us see what are we going to learn today. First of all, we will understand what is a plugin. Post that we will learn how to create a plugin and register it to your CRM environment. After that, we will test if our plugin is deployed successfully and working as expected on our CRM environment. Let's start with understanding what a plugin is. A plugin is a custom business logic which you can integrate with MS CRM to modify or augment the standard behavior of the platform. Plugins are event handlers since they are registered to execute in response to a particular event being fired by the CRM platform. It can be any event like creation of a record or updation of a record. It can also be deletion of a record. Now, technically a plugin is a custom class written in any of the .NET framework compliant languages be it a C Sharp, VB.NET or any of your preferred languages which implements the iPlugin interface. iPlugin interface is part of some of the CRM SDK libraries. We will talk about it in detail once we start about the plugin development. Let us move to the next and most important step of this tutorial which is development of a plugin. In order to develop a plugin, you need to start with creating a new project of a .NET class library in Visual Studio. Okay, so let's start with creating a new project in Visual Studio. Here you can see from your file menu, you can create a new project and select the class library template from your Visual C Sharp option. Here you can provide any of the name, you can provide any name to your solution and the directory where do you want the solution to be in your hard drive. For the purpose of this tutorial, I have already created a new class library solution and code is also written here. The first thing we have to do here is to add the SDK reference DLL which is necessary to write the plugin code. As you can see inside your project reference, there are two of the Microsoft CRM libraries added. One is Microsoft XRM SDK and the another one is Microsoft CRM SDK proxy. We can find these two DLLs inside our SDK bin folder. SDK is free to download for everyone. Once you download an SDK, once you download and sorry, once you download and extract the SDK, you will find all these directories inside it. We have to go to bin directory. Here you will find the required DLLs which we will be using for our plugin development. Let's talk about the importance of these two reference DLLs. These references contain some of the very important components like iPlugin interface and some of the required classes which are required in order to develop a plugin. Now let's have a look at the plugin code. On the top you will see all the required namespaces or the references which is being used inside your plugin code. You can see that I have added the additional Microsoft XRM SDK which we have added as a reference here. Post that as usual we have provided the namespace to our solution which we are going to work on. 
here is the class sample plugin which is implementing the i plugin interface while implementing i plugin interface we have to implement the execute method which is part of i plugin interface now what is this execute method whenever the event for which the plugin is registered gets fired the method execute is invoked inside your plugin as you can see that we have passed i service provider object inside the execute method it can contains some useful objects like plugin execution context tracing service and many other we will talk about them in detail while we go through the plugin code inside the execute method the first part is to create the tracing service object tracing service is used for logging which can be helpful while debugging your plugin tracing service can be obtained through your service provider which you have passed as a parameter to your execute method post that we will be creating an object of your i plugin execution context it is the core part of your plugin it contains the information about the runtime environment which the plugin is being executed on it contains information related to plugins event execution pipeline along with the other crucial information about the entity user context crm organization and much more now in the next step we will use one of such parameter to identify that plugin is executed on lead entity using the target parameter of the context first of all we will check if the target is an entity post that we will check if the entity is lead on which the plugin is being executed if that is not the case we will end our plugin here now inside the try block we will see another critical information obtained using the i service provider object which was passed as a parameter of execute method in order to access ms crm organization service we will create an instance of the service factory through service providers get service method once we get the service factory instance we can get the service instance by passing the context dot user id to create organization service method this will make sure that the code will be executed in the same users context for whom the plugin event is fired for those who are not much aware about the organization service and why its in instance is created here let me give some brief background all the operations performed in crm always happen through crm organization service going forward we will just call it as crm web service even if you create a record manually inside your crm platform internally crm will call the crm web service in the logged in users context even when you are simply clicking on any of the views in your crm platform internally crm executes the retrieve multiple method of crm web service whatever we have discussed so far is part of writing a plugin which is mandatory be it any of the plugin so right from here when we created the tracing service object till getting the organization service object this is the mandatory part of developing a plugin post that 
we will implement our business logic now before we begin i would like to give you an idea about the plugin and what this plugin will perform for that we will move to our crm environment currently i have removed all the leads from this environment so that it will be easier to test our plugin now the object of our plugin is to create a follow up task record whenever a new lead is created now if you can see that follow up task is a custom entity in this environment so if we go to follow up there are no records available in this environment so whenever a new lead will be created our plugin will automatically create a follow up task for that lead and it will not only create a follow up task but it will also associate the lead for which the plugin is being executed if i open a blank record you will see that along with the other information there is a lead lookup present in the form so the objective of our plugin is to create a follow up task and associate the originating lead to it through which the plugin is been executed let's go back to our visual studio and go through the code which is written to achieve the same first of all we are creating an object of entity class which will hold the new record of follow up task now in this section we will associate the originating lead to this new follow up task so here you can see one another important parameter of context which is an output parameter the output parameter will give us an attribute called id which is the lead id for which the plugin is being executed using the lead id and the lead name we will create the association between lead and our custom entity follow up task we need to create an object of entity reference in order to associate the follow up task with the lead once this is performed we will just use our tracing service to log what action we are performing and post that we will make the organization service call to create the follow up record and we will catch any of the errors if since it is part of the try block now here you can see invalid plugin execution exception this is also very important because if you pass any string argument inside your invalid plugin execution exception that message will be prompted to user on the form while the plugin is being executed so in order to display any message most probably an error message to the end user we should use invalid plugin execution exception this is all for our plugin code now the next step is to build this solution we will clean and build the solution again to make sure that the solution is built successfully as you can see the solution is built successfully now the next part of the plugin development is registering a plugin the first step of registering a plugin is 
to sign the assembly now if you go to your project properties you will see a signing key i have already enabled this checkbox which will sign this assembly you can provide any of the preferred name to this signing key once this process is complete the next step is to register your plugin through plugin registration tool the plugin registration tool is located inside your sdk tools and you can see plugin registration tool over here after opening the plugin registration tool you will have to create a new connection to connect to your organization after providing the required details in your plugin registration tool like the server port and the username you can connect to your organization if the authentication is successful you can register a new assembly through register new assembly and you can browse the dll file which was generated through your solution which is a sample plugin in this case once you load the assembly it will be reflected here once the assembly is loaded you can register a new step for this assembly you can see that we have to provide the create message on lead entity in order to register our plugin on creation of lead now there are various parameters available inside your registering your step we will discuss in more detail about this parameter in the other tutorial where we will talk about the plugin in an advanced way now we are done with all the steps for our plugin registration it is time to test our plugin let's go to our crm environment and create a new lead we will just provide the sample data or a test data to our new lead now let us save this record the record is saved successfully now let's go to the follow up task and ideally if our plugin is executed successfully it should have created a follow up task record yes as you can see that it has automatically created a follow up task record which was not present earlier and not only that but it has also associated the lead which we had created so our plugin has executed successfully and it has not only created a follow up task but it has also associated the lead entity with it i hope that this video tutorial was helpful to you thank you for watching this video